वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू बॉजराव आई एस अकेडमी दिस इज दी एथ जुलाई ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री टूडे वी हैव सर्टेन इंपॉर्टेंट आर्टिकल्स फॉर यूर एग्जाम प्रिपरेशन we will look into this all articles in a vivid and elaborate manner first we start with the quotation for the day and the quotation for the day is strength is life weakness is death expansion is life contraction is death love is life hatred is death See guys, in your life, if someone gives you hurt, or someone feels envy, someone feels anger towards you, try to overcome the challenge or the envy by showing the love towards them. If we give the compassion, love to others, automatically it will give us the love in the regard, in the reciprocity. So you yourself make sure you love everyone. Don't no need to get the envy or anger with everyone. Make yourself comfortable with the. Tolerance with all the misbeliefs, other disbeliefs. Okay, guys, let's move to the other article. Oh, this is the yesterday's question. In India, which one of the following constitutional amendment was widely believed to be enacted to overcome the judicial interpretation of the fundamental rights? The answer for this question is option A, first amendment; option B, forty-second amendment; option C, forty-fourth amendment; option D, eighty-sixth amendment. And I said you in yesterday's discussion itself. The answer for this question is first amendment. You all know us in the 1951. We all had the Champakam Thorai Rajan case and the Shankari Prasad case. So regarding these cases, uh, the first amendment has been enacted to change the fundamental rights. Okay, guys. The answer for this question is option A, first amendment. And this is the today's question with reference to ancient India. Consider the following statement. First statement: the concept of stupa is Buddhist in origin. Second statement: stupa was generally a repository of relics. And the said third statement is stupa was a votive and commemorative structure in Buddhist tradition. How many of the statements given above are correct? Option A one only, option two only two, option C all three, and option D none. See guys, in previous year many or most of the questions are like this only. If you know only one statement, if you don't know the other statement, then it will create you problem. So you should have very vast and Clear cut knowledge over the topic. Until and unless you possess good knowledge over the topic, you cannot overcome these kind of questions. So please make sure that you understand the basic concept well to overcome the these kind of new challenges which the UPSC creates for new students like you. Okay, guys, try to answer the question in the comment section. We will discuss the answer in the tomorrow's discussion. Okay, these are the important articles which we are going to look into in today's discussion. Sovereignty after the euphoria of U.S. state visit. You all know, guys. Our Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji has visited the U.S. state, and we have created, enacted the certain agreements to um, strengthen our technological and scientific research and development. We will look at this article, and the author has tried to compare the Manmohan Singh ji era and the Narendra Modi ji era by comparing this. They are also emphasizing on the importance of U.S.A. for India. The second article is the infinite variety of custom. You all know, guys. Our India has been in, uh, trying to create the Uniform Civil Code. Under this Uniform Civil Code, the, yesterday we have discussed the some positive aspect of the Uniform Civil Code. Today we are going to see the other side of the coin, which is the challenges regarding the implementation of UCC. You know, guys, India is well known for the unity in diversity. That we can say. It is a multi mosaic model of the multicultural system. We cannot bring the same law for everyone. So there are certain challenges. We will look into all these challenges. What the authors try to give us uh, uh, regarding the tribal culture and the uh, north eastern culture. We will look into all these things. And the last article is PM Gati Shakti Yojana, which is the umbrella scheme for the enhancement of our infrastructure in India. Okay, guys. So. Without wasting our time, let's move into the first article that is sobriety after the euphoria of the U.S. state visit. I hope we have discussed in the different perspective regarding the U.S. state visit. Our Prime Minister has visited there, and we have enacted the different agreements regarding the space sector, drone sector, and the uh, what do you say, uh, microchip sector. So different sectors we have enacted the different agreements. In this article, the author has tried to signify the importance of USA for the India and the importance of India for USA. So, 
uh, here the author has tried to compare the Manmohan Singh Ji era's visit and also the PM Modi Ji's era's visit. Okay, let's move into the article. Actually, what the author is trying to emphasize here, the author is trying to say, the U, the India should use this as opportunity to become the global power. This is the crux of this article. What the author is trying to emphasize upon. Okay, guys, you all know our PM has visited, and the author is trying to bring the historical perspective because we cannot believe or we cannot always stand with the USA. Because guys, there is certain reason. USA was always against our approach. In past aspect, if you see, during 1960s and 1970s, when we were facing war with China and Pakistan, USA was not with us. You all remember, guys, USSR at that time, the Russia was with us. So, the author is trying to emphasize that US stand is not permanent upon anyone. It will change according to the time and situation. And here, the author has mentioned the Lyndon B. Johnson, during 1963, he was the president for US. He not helped India during the India-China war. In the 1970s, you all know we faced war with the Pakistan. During that time, we had the US president Richard Nixon. He didn't help India. Uh, in fact, he sent the Bengal, uh, seventh fleet for the help of Pakistan. The na naval ship from the USA entered into the Bay of Bengal to attack the India to to stop India from entering into the East East Pakistan, which today we are calling it as a Bangladesh. So, in fact, we see in the past days, we stood against the USA. But the time and situation has changed now. USA need our friendship is a very important thing. And India also needs the USA to become empowered in the defense sector and the technological sector. Okay, guys? The author has... The author is emphasizing that America's attitude has been changing. It is clearly visible from the recent agreements what we have made with the America. You all know we have enacted the agreement to co-produce the General Electric 414 engine for our M Tejas MK2 aircraft. And also we have signed, we have created a new initiative on the critical and emerging technology. So, under this initiative, we will share our technology. There will be a technology transfer between these countries and also we are trying to create the resilient supply chain for our India. To, to create the resilient supply chain, we need the very good backward and forward linkages. Who can help in this regard? USA has very good ability to help us to create the forward and backward linkage. So, India needs the USA's help. Okay, guys? And the author has tried to emphasize upon the different Prime Minister visit. If you see in the past days itself, from the past, we many prime minister, many prime minister, how many prime minister have, many prime minister have visited the USA and many people have enacted the agreements. But the author has tried to compare only the Manmohan Singh ji and the Narendra Modi ji. In the regime of Manmohan Singh ji, you all know, guys, I have already discussed you. There was a civil nuclear deal agreement when we conducted the Pokhan nuclear test. There was the world sanctions upon the India. At the time, US has given some waiver regarding these sanctions. US has supported at that moment. In fact, under the non-proliferation treaty, we have never signed the nuclear non-proliferation treaty. We also got waiver regarding this aspect. And we have the separate agreement, which is famously called 123 agreement. We got different waivers during the Manmohan Singh regime for the India during that time. And also regarding the Nuclear reactor creation, uh, we have got the waiver from International Atomic Energy Agency and also we got the freedom to reprocess and enrich our uranium resources in India. Even our o Barack Obama, you all know president at the time, Barack, Barack Obama ji has called our Manmohan Singh as a, Manmohan Singh ji as a guru, which means it starts, the, it automatically depicts that USA has started the or started to recognize the importance of India. Okay, guys. Now, this is the time regarding the Manmohan Singh regime. And now, let's see into the Modi Ji's regime. 
during the modi's regime modi ji's regime our diplomatic power and our global power and our soft power has increased in a very good manner because of this our cooperation regarding the technological diplomacy has increased in a very good and effective manner you can see we have uh, created agreement for the mq9b predator drones and also to increase our cooperation in the defense area we have we have we, we have signed the initiative on critical and emerging technologies and also master ship repair agreement have been signed under this we will create the interoperability with interoperability between our indian navy and the us navy and also we are cooperating in the space technology regards nasa and isro are trying to collaborate together and also we have signed the artemis accord in past discussion we have discussed about the artemis accord and artemis mission so nasa and isro are collaborating together to create a joint mission to international space station india need the separate international space station let's see what happens in future so this is the importance of our pm modi ji's visit and what the author is trying to emphasize here the perception how the us perceive india has changed a lot in these days in fact we want to use this agreement and the support from us as a bridge power note this word you are Um, note this point, my dear students. It is bridge power. Uh, we want to use this as a bridge power to become the global power. Our India should become Atma Nirbharta. It should become the global uh, Vishwa Guru by using this USA's help. And we all should remember, we should not get get into the subordinates of the USA. Like we want to use this and we want to become Vishwa Guru. But we should not become subordinate because ultimately it will affect our whole humanity. Okay, and the author has concluded the article by emphasizing the Atal Bihari Vajpayee ji statement that India and the US are natural allies. Natural allies. This strategic nexus of India US has a very good role to play regarding the countering China's. expansion in the indo pacific region if we want to counter the china definitely we need the us's help so india and us should stand together as a natural allies to counter the china and also the author has emphasized to become the atmanirbharta and also to become the developed nation india should use this us us help and should this will play a very good large role in our development and enhancement kadu motora so this is all about the first article let's move into the second article the infinite variety of custom you all know guys in yesterday's discussion our ex our former vice president venkai naidu ji has written the good perspectives of the ucc uniform civil code but in this article today's article the author has tried to give the other side of the coin which is the challenges regarding the uniform civil code we have different challenges while implementing the uniform civil code because you all know guys india is a multicultural nation we have the multi mosaic model of multiculturalism we cannot inculcate everyone we cannot we cannot create a melting point like the usa because in usa all culture are in interlinked together so they can adopt the uniform civil code but in india we are the multi mosaic model it is like it is like a colloidal solution they cannot collide to each other they will stand like a conglomerate manner in the Uh, what do you say it in the suspended manner are you all getting me i hope you all heard this word suspended solution collateral solution true solution so i use this word as in the chemistry no need to get into this let's move into the what are the challenges in fact the author is trying to give the clear picture regarding the jharkhand tribal santal region and also the northeastern region okay guys you all know our prime minister modi ji has pushed for the uniform civil code to create a a uniform personal law for all over the country but there are problems with certain northeastern states and the jharkhand and they feel that significance of their way of life will become undone if ucc is implemented are you all getting me because you all know guys their way of life they have certain way of life regarding the marriage and the, the uh, religious function and also the inheritance parental property transfer the adoption these are the different perspectives which uh, which are the which are the aspects of life <clears throat> if once we create the uniform civil code for everyone it will automatically undo the their own customary laws 
especially here the author has tried to concentrate on the parental property that is inheritance of parental property you all know guys we have patriarchal society whenever we transfer land in the most of the cases in tribal culture they transfer from father to son they cannot transfer the uh, land or the whatever property the father possess it cannot be transferred to the daughter because it is the patriarchal tribal culture if we create the uniform civil code it will ultimately affect the the own customary laws of different tribal people we will look into that uh, different who are they who will get affected by this uniform civil code first is tribal groups of jharkhand they believe that getting justice from the normal civil court uh, by undergoing this all legal process will be a very cumbersome process it will be a time taking process and they will not get justice so what they think they think there has there has been a very good village panchayat system in the tribal culture itself which has been in the existence for the past 100 years 100 plus years so they feel this village or the gram panchayat system has been very effective in giving them or delivering them the justice they are feeling the other legal system which we have like a supreme court high court and the other subordinate courts this is not very effective for this jharkhand tribal group so basically it is their belief they feel that they have certain challenges by approaching or accessing the justice through normal legal system and also most of the tribes in the jharkhand area are patrilineal line of succession are you getting me patrilineal line of succession if the father possess the father possess property it will automatically go to the son it will not go to daughter so if we create we create the uniform civil code it will affect their own customary law in fact if daughters are allowed to claim their father's land they are saying that it will create a problem because once the tribal daughters are happen to marry with the other non tribal members or the other religious community people then automatically their land their own property will move to the other non tribal non tribal people or the other religious members are you all getting me guys you see in fact this is the very big challenge we want to look upon because we don't want to we don't want to create a that kind of situation where tribal land was taken away by the non tribal people we have given this land to tribal people to ensure their lovely livelihood and the sustainable life for them we have allotted this land but once the ucc brought in it will affect the transfer of land to the other people also we want to look at this issue this is one of the biggest challenge and also the author has emphasized here we have created the panchayat extension schedule areas act in 1996 and also we have the chota nagpur tenancy act in 1908 and also we have santanal fargana tenancy act these act recognized to the customary practices in the jharkhand because these are protected under the fifth schedule of the constitution fifth schedule of the constitution is all about protecting the scheduled areas so under these articles we have empowered or ensured that their customary laws prevail in their region and also if you see the jharkhand high court judgment it has recognized the padha system which is the around customary practice uh, it is all about the to dispose the adultery case whenever this around uh, or the the tribal in the jharkhand area they get the adultery case high court has advised the family court to dispose those cases according to their customary laws itself because the jharkhand high court knows that they don't want to infringe upon the customary laws so once we create ucc in fact the judgment like this will come into the question there will be a big debate whether we want to take judgment as the president or whether we want to take parliamentary laws as the president so there will be a big challenge regarding the informant how we can infer the laws which laws we want to infer whether it is a supreme court judgment or high court judgment whether it is the parliament law so there will be a some very good challenge regarding this what we want to adopt whether it is the court judgment or it is the parliament law and also if you see the uh, supreme court judgment regarding the chota nagpur uh, chota nagpur tenancy act and the santal pargana act there have been the liberal process regarding the transfer of land because 
the scheduled tribe can transfer the land to the other person regardless of gender or clan or tribe they can transfer the tribal area from one scheduled tribe to another scheduled tribe it is the very liberal process regarding the transfer of land in the jharkhand or santal region but once we create the uniform civil code this liberal process may get affected basically guys these are the fear in the santal people they are fearing that ucc if they brought in then their own customary laws and the transfer of property and the women empowerment in those region they feel that they will be affected and also there are other concerns in the other regions the author has tried to bring in the northeastern region because you all know guys in northeast we have seven sister states these states have different tribal people different tribal people have their own customary laws so the author has tried to give the different states and their customary laws in fact you all know guys we have created a special provision for these states uh, we have the article 371a to 371j these are the important articles which provide special status to different states you know article 371a is for nagaland 371b is for assam c is for manipur d is for andhra pradesh and telangana e is for universities of andhra pradesh and f is for sikkim g is for mizoram h is for arunachal pradesh i is for goa uh, i g is for th i j is for j is for karnataka okay guys so these are the different special provision regarding the different states what the author is trying to say here if we bring in the uniform civil code then it will come in conflict with the sixth schedule of the constitution because you all know guys we have given the some special state uh, status to the the four states in the sixth schedule but once we brought in the uniform civil code it will affect our it will affect our it will affect our it will affect our uh, customary laws and also in the supreme court judgment also um, in 2022 april 2022 supreme court has agreed upon the observation given by the gauhati high court what the gauhati high court has said the gauhati high court has upheld the miso customary law what is the miso customary law miso customary law have certain code for inheritance of property because under the misos Mizo tribes they will give the land to only those people who took care of their parents at the old age of parents are you getting me guys see we all have parent once the parent get old age we want to look after our parents but if we failed to look after our parents even though if we fail to look after our parents we will get the ancestral property but in case of mizo there is a customary law one and only if we take care of our parents then only we will get the ancestral property from our parents see guys this is very good provision even yeah you see yeah, while enacting the uniform civil code we should consider these kind of provisions you all know guys in today's world ethics has eroded in a very big manner we want to ensure the more ethics should prevail in our india so this is very good customary law regarding the mesos so once we create the uniform civil code it may affect the mizo customary law and also there in mizo community there is a certain other responsibilities the inheritance depends on the responsibilities carried out by the legal heir while at the same time daughter stands no claim if they are married off see guys in mizo customary law daughter cannot claim any ancestral property and the sons can claim other legal heirs can claim the property one and only if they look after their parents at the at their old age see in mrs customary law also there is some disparity and discrimination regarding the women we want to look into this and also the same laws is also being followed in the bodo community of assam you all know guys they also possess some certain similar customary law in the bodo Bodo land, the inheritor is a duty bound to perform the last rights of the parents. See guys, this is very important provision during uh, regarding the Bodo customary law. Bodo inheritor is duty bound to perform the last rights of the parents. And in the case of death of one of them, take care of the surviving parent and the other survivors. See guys, we have father and mother. If any one of them died, then the children or the 
हाँ चिल्ड्रन शुड टेक केयर ऑफ दी अदर वन सर्वेविंग मेंबर इफ दे फेल टू टेक केयर ऑफ दी अदर सर्वेविंग मेंबर देन दे विल नॉट गेट दी अदर कस्टम एंड देयर एंसेस्ट्रल प्रॉपर्टी दिस इज दी बोर्डो रीजियन रिगार्ड्स एंड इफ यू सी इन टू द नागालैंड एरिया एंड इफ यू सी इन टू द मेघालय एरिया देर आर सर्टन ट्राइबल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन दी आर getting into the fear because by bringing in the uniform civil code it will be like the one code for one country it will undermines their constitution because nagaland have special status special powers they it is ensured in the constitution article 371 a is all about nagaland special power if we create the uniform civil code they are fearing that their power may be undermined they Uh, this uniform civil code is against the constitution article 371a at the same time the patriarchal customary laws makes it difficult for noga women to inherit the land although some parents in urban areas have started to change this even though we have given the power to ensure to follow the customary laws in the nagaland area but these customary laws are creating the disparity and discrimination gender discrimination women till today they cannot inherit the parental property so Nagaland so Nagal no so in the Nagaland we should ensure we should bring the uniform civil code and it should not also affect the constitution in case of Meghalaya in case of Meghalaya daughters inherit the ancestral property from their parents there is a different customary law in the meghalaya see guys in meghalaya there is a kasi region kasi mountain region we have garo kasi jaintia in the kasi region there is a matrilineal property they follows the matrilineal social structure what they do in their family they have the youngest daughter who fam they call as a kaddu see i can't pronounce it properly it is kaddu or kaddu uh, in english they we call it as youngest daughter if this youngest daughter performs the religious ceremonies and take care of their parents and look after their family members she has the power to inherit the ancestral property even though the youngest daughter inherit the parents their property she is not the owner of the property because she want the consent of her father in law who who she is married to like are you all getting me guys she will not be a owner she need to get the consent from the maternal uncle she can sell it only after getting the consent from her maternal uncle even though the meghalaya kasi region i see a matrilineal society even though they inherit the properties to the daughter the daughter is not a owner to that property if she want to sell she want to get consent from the maternal uncle so this is the case with the meghalaya so you see guys different states have different customary laws and these different customary laws are sometimes they are in the compatible with the constitution but sometimes they create discrimination gender discrimination and the other discriminations so there are different regions they possess different customary laws and they are fearing what will happen if ucc is implemented we want to look into this issue in a impartial manner in the neutral manner guys because ucc has both positive aspect and also the negative aspect we want to outweigh the both these things and we should get the middle path we should ensure that we have a proper uniform civil code where it will be applicable for everyone and it should not hurt the other feelings and other customary laws okay guys let's move into the other article government to share pm gati shakti data you all know guys this is the umbrella scheme for infrastructure development see in fact let's let's talk like a story if you see in the past days whenever indian government signs any road project what happens first they will clear the uh, forest area the agriculture land and they will create the road after few days what they will say they want to launch the telephone line for the telephone line what will happen they will again dug this road and they will lay the pipes for the telephone communication and they will again bury this road and they will create the again road and after few days what happens they will get permission to create the other information technology or other electricity line and other water supply line so regarding these kind of different project again again and again the sanctions will come and what happens for the again and again these processes we want to 
dug the road again and again and we will build the road again so see everything again again and again everything occurs again and again because of these cumbersome process our state finance is not used properly see guys first they are laying road for transport purpose and after that they will dug this road put information communication line and they will again create the road and after a few days they will get water linkage project so for the water linkage they will again dug the road and they will create it so ultimately what happens our state finance is not being used in a very sustainable manner for the same road project we are using the too much of money for same information technology line for the same water linkage pipeline we are using too much of money but to overcome this problem we have created the new program which is the pm gati shakti under this what happens we will create the cooperation between different ministries information technology ministry jal shakti ministry and the uh, ministry of ports and shipping ministry of roads and railways we will link all these ministries if any ministry has any proposal regarding the development of any region see guys if you for example think about the port we want to connect the port to the interland area Uh, for example chennai to bengaluru to create the road first they will talk with the ministry of shipping from ministry of ports from where to where they need the road link to connect the roadways to uh, to connect the ports to the railways after that they want to ensure railways getting the proper linkage to the other station after that while while creating the roads they they will also ensure uh, in the sideways of roads in the sideways of roads we will create a dip and a concrete walls under this concrete walls we will lay different wires for information technology water supply electrical supply so if we again create any program if we need any other thing we don't want to dug this road again we will use this concrete steps what we are creating in the sides of the road which will be used for other projects in fact uh, to in today's generation we have the 4g connections in future we may have 5g connections so we don't want to again dug this road we will just add the another one communication line which will ensure the 5g communication are you all getting me guys so what is happening here we are creating the interoperability among the different departments and the different ministries so because of this what will happen our state finance will not get wasted into the same project in fact by using the a uh, different money for different project in the same area will create a cumbersome thing for state uh, it it cannot promote the capital enhancement and it ultimately lead to the more cost in the logistics in fact you, do you know guys india have very big share of gdp has a logistic cost nearly 13% if we create the 100 rupees product in india to create this 100 rupees product we want to spend 13 rupees as a logistics what is logistics transportation packaging these are comes under the logistics are you all getting me guys from one area to another area we want to transport by when we are transporting we will create a proper coverage proper packaging cushion material so this is the logistics we are transferring from one area to another area so logistic cost 13 rupees if you see the other countries usa have nearly about 5 5 rupees china has only 4 rupees so our india is targeting to bring this from 13% of gdp to 7% of gdp so for this we need this umbrella project pm gati shakti we will look into this why it is very important and what is the news regarding the pm gati shakti what they said the government to share the pm gati shakti data in a very open and transparent manner so that what happens if they give the geospatial data in the open online portal the industries and the other potential investors will get access to this data it will automatically enhance the transparency and accountability among all the stakeholders to ensure trust in all the stakeholders the pm gati shakti data has been opened for all for access and usage okay guys are you all getting me so let's understand what is this pm gati shakti is all about what is the aim of this program the aim is to ensure the integrated planning and implementation of infrastructure project see this word the most keyword in this regard is integrated all departments all ministries will integrate together and work 
and coordinate together to create a plan and to ensure they implement the plan in a very co very good cooperated manner okay guys very simple guys they all work together they all plan together they all will implement together so that they don't want to waste paisa in this matters so this is the most important aim of pm gati shakti and they they also have aim to create the 11 industrial corridors and the two defense corridors please remember these two states where they are creating the new defense corridor one is in tamil nadu and the other is in the uttar pradesh and also um, we are ensuring that we create the 4g connectivity to all villages and also we want to expand our national highway network to the 2 lakh kilometer you all know guys our highway ministry has been working very effective manner under the nitin gadkari ji within 2 months to 2 months gap they will sanction the new project new projects are implemented in a very good manner so because because of under because of nitin gadkari ji regime in the national highway department the road construction is going in a very good effective manner and they are, they have created the pm gati shakti digital platform under this umbrella platform every ministry every department will regularly upload the data um, to so ensure the transparency regarding what is the development going on in this region and the sanctioned infrastructure project project so what happens guys if we ensure the transparency automatically the allotted paisa allotted rupees will not go into the corruption corruption hand they will automatically be used in the infrastructure development why we need the in integrated infrastructure development because i already mentioned you guys once we plan the project and we want to implement the project but there is a very big gap between the planning and the implementation to fill this gap we need the integrated infrastructure development and also i have mentioned you the logistic cost in india is about 13 percentage of gdp which is very higher than other developed countries to reduce this we want to ensure the integrated infrastructure development and also to increase our competitiveness of india's export we need good logistics with without logistic our product will look very high cost in the international market so if we reduce the logistic cost it will ensure that our products become cheaper in the international market because of this our export will increase and also this is is in this integrated infrastructure development project is in line with the national monetization pipeline what is this national monetization pipeline under this national monetization monetization pipeline it has been announced that they create a clear framework for monetization of public assets they will monetize the public assets and they will create a corpus of amount of fund so by using this fund we will attract the more investors we will allot this prizes to other investors so we attract more investment in the infrastructure development so this is in line with the this is in line with the other integrated infrastructure development project so as a conclusion the author has mentioned here pm gati shakti is a right step in this direction to ensure the atmanirbharta and the self reliance we need the pm gati shakti and to make ourselves the developed country it is very imperative to have this initiative because we need the stable and predictable regulatory and institutional framework to ensure the infrastructure development i remember one proverb which is mentioned by american president in its congress american roads are rich not because america is rich but america is rich because only the american roads are rich if we want to become rich we also should ensure that indian roads are a rich so that's all the today's discussion guys thank you so much for listening if you like the video please press the like button if you want me to suggest anything please do it in the comment section we will try to improve our quality in the video and also don't forget to touch the subscribe button along with that touch the bell icon bell icon button so that you get all the videos whenever we post under the bajira is academy so thank you guys have a nice day bye bye